No way, a collab. <laughs> What's up YouTube today? I'm really excited to be making a video with my friend Clement. He is a software engineer at Google and the creator of Algo Expert, which is one of my favorite online resources for technical interview prep. Clement, very happy to have you here. Thanks for having me, Chris. It's awesome to be here. Today, we're gonna be talking about how to land a software engineering internship. This is gonna be a two-part video, one on my channel and one on Clement's channel. But let's start by talking about why you wanna do an internship to begin with and why companies want interns. Clement, what's the value you see in internships? I think you've hosted a few interns at Google. Yeah, yeah, so I've actually hosted three interns now. I think these internships are really important because they're really like a, a great way for candidates, meaning the interns, right, to understand what it's like to work as a software engineer, understand what it's like to work at the company that they're interning at, yeah. gain experience, but it's also a great way for the company to start recruiting very high quality full-time candidates. So what I'm getting at here is that the goal of the company is to get you to join them full-time in a year or in two years you know, or three years, depending on, on uh, how young you are in your career. So you are essentially treated like a full-time employee. And of course, it'll be like, understood that you are early on in your career so you know you might you might need a bit more mentorship or a bit, a bit more you know hand holding but at the end of the day you know you're gonna be put in the ocean so to speak so I think it's really important to emphasize that interns are only there for a very short amount of time. It's three to four months, and that's usually how long a full-time employee spends just ramping up and onboarding. So usually the level of productivity and output between an intern and a new hire can sometimes be about the same, except a bad hire, if they just go straight into a full-time role, it's pretty expensive for the company. They're getting paid a lot more than an intern, and it's really, I mean, I don't like to say it this way, but it's hard to get rid of them. Like when, when a company has an intern, right? Yeah. It's a great way for them to assess whether that person will be worth hiring. It's not too risky. It's only yeah. three months, and if the person just doesn't fit, you just don't give them a return offer. That makes them all the more important for the candidates, though, because that means that like, if you do have, let's say, a 12-month, or sorry, a 12-week internship, you want to do your very best because you want to prove to the company that you would be worthy of getting hired full time. People, you know, kind of bash on engineering interns because they get paid so much for, you know, the level of experience that they have. But from a company's perspective, this is kind of their way of hedging against risk. This is their way of like mitigating bad hires. And I think that understanding that this is a business decision, this is a very cost effective decision from a company's perspective, is really important for actually framing your approach to getting internships. Because when you're going to career fairs, you're talking to recruiters, you don't want to make this sound like, oh, you're applying to a class, you're just trying to show up and suck up all the knowledge that you can and you're there to learn because you want to convince people that you add value as kind of a pseudo full-time engineer. To actually add on to that, right? I think this is mm -hmm. a good segue because you also mentioned that, that engineering interns are paid a lot. When you compare it to other industries, engineering interns are paid a ton. It's insane, right? Yeah. But these internships are very hard to get. Mm -hmm. They're not trivial, right? It's not something that you can just sort of like walk in the door and get that internship that pays yeah. a lot. You've, you've done a bunch of internships, Chris. What do you have to do to get these internships? Yeah. So the thing that makes software engineering internships infamously hard is the ruthless interviewing process. They ask you technical interview questions, multiple rounds, usually um, either a phone screen, a series of on-site interviews that involve solving algorithm, data structures, and overall problem solving problems. Again, this is to minimize the number of false positives of bad hires and they can afford to let go of candidates that fail even just one problem so it's really important to be well prepared lucky for us clement is an interview god so what is your advice for preparing for these interviews yeah so i, I don't know if i'm an interview god but i am <laughs> I, I do think that i'm i'm pretty well versed in these interviews at this yeah. point because you know i've spent the last like, two and a half years sort of living and breathing interviews yeah, and, and technical coding interview questions. The key thing to realize, and I think a lot of people make the mistake here, is that intern interviews tend to be very, very similar in the engineering industry to full-time engineer interviews. You will likely be asked the same kinds of questions just with a sort of lower bar. Right. And by the way, in the same vein, when you're like an entry level engineer, you're also being asked the same kinds of questions, at least in the algorithm space, as senior engineers are asked. It's just that the bar for the senior engineers is way higher. 
Gotcha. And you might be thinking, okay, I see all these materials or, or resources to prepare for full-time jobs, but like I am going for an internship, is it gonna be different? No, mm -hmm. it's gonna be very similar. And so that's why here, of course, I'm gonna put the, 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 uh, the plug for algoexpert.io yeah, slash Chris, by the way, if you want a discount. Uh, to support your channel. Check it out in the description. You get, I think, 30% off. Yeah, and so and so on Algo Expert, right, you can prepare, we give you these questions, these sort of curated questions, the exact kind of questions that you'll get in an interview, right? And we, we help you understand like how, how they work by showing you video explanations, you know, conceptually on a whiteboard, uh, coding it out, right? You have a full work, uh, coding workspace, but it's really important to put the time to practice. Definitely. I would wager um, that you've probably put a lot of time to practice for yeah, interviews yeah, when definitely. you apply for your internships. Too, too many hours, too many hours. Um, I think one of the most important things for me is practicing these types of interview questions as realistically as possible because I feel like yeah. a lot of college students will just take the data structures course and they'll think that they're set. They'll just go back to their lectures uh, and notes that they took and they'll just kind of vaguely just review concepts and then go into an interview thinking that they're ready to go. And that's not always the case because interviewing is a very specific skill on its own. What did you actually do to prepare? What was a typical interview prep day like? I would put in, you know, like 10 hours a day uh, wow. <laughs> doing these these questions. Okay. And I, the reason, by the way, like this sounds like a lot, right? 10 hours a day. Yeah. Um, I was under a time crunch. My the, the very bulk of my interview prep happened in about, I think it was 10 to 14 days. But ideally, like I would recommend, especially if you're a college student, give yourself some time much probably much better to do a question a day than to have to do you know 10 to 12 hours a day of algorithm definitely yeah these interviews they just pile on very quickly before you even notice it like especially right. because when you're recruiting you tend to use interviews as leverage to get other interviews and then offers to get more interviews like i was kind of just cruising through the school year just focusing on my classes and just living life as a sophomore in college and then i got my facebook interview i got a google interview and a lyft interview all within two weeks of each other so I kind of had to very quickly just put everything on hold and just grind leak code cracking the coding interview those are kind of memes at this point setting a timer for myself actually recording myself on my phone to practice talking through problems I would never watch the videos but I would just record just to have that pressure like an actual interview and trying to cram this into two weeks it's a lot. It's really hard to predict how you're going to perform in an actual interview when you don't have that much of a track record. When you're just going off for two weeks, no matter how much you try to cram in there. And I think, I think you know, at the end of the day, like interviewing is a skill, and you just have to practice them. Do you have some sort of like a ritual or method for doing interview problems? You know, people often ask you, like, what are the what are the five steps that I should do in an interview, right? The key thing is to treat the interview as if you were with a coworker trying to solve a problem on a whiteboard. And you're the one sort of leading the problem or leading the discussion and the interviewer is sort of your coworker that's there to kind of like assist you. How would you, like if, if right now you and I were in a room and we were given a puzzle, right? Let's say, you know, like those escape rooms where you have to escape given a few clues or whatever. Yeah. We would, we would like, put our brains together and try to problem solve this. Like, okay, maybe we have to do this. Okay, well maybe we could use that tool over there. Oh, that tool happens to be a data structure, right? Or maybe we could use uh, this method. Oh, well that happens to be like an algorithmic technique, like recursion or something. I would highly encourage you, do not be afraid to use the whiteboard. The whiteboard is your friend, because sometimes you'll end up coding out the problem on a computer, but don't be afraid to go back on the whiteboard and draw things out. And if you're interviewing online, right, on a computer, like a phone interview on a Google Doc or on some other platform, don't be afraid to like write pseudocode and arrows and stuff on the editor, right? Yeah. Like, it's very important to be like, okay, well, if we add this input, A pointing to B, blah, 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 right? Put it on the document. It'll help convey to your interviewer that you're thinking through all these things, right? And it'll help you sort of have a more sort of systematic approach to your problem solving. So I think that's pretty much it when it comes to passing interviews and preparing. We can go into more depth in other videos, but I think what everyone's wondering now is, how do you get these interviews? That's a pretty obvious step in actually landing the internship. So for this part, we're actually going to move to Clement's channel. We're going to have a part two for this video where we're going to talk about everything you need to understand to get the interview in the first place. So thank you for watching and I'll see you on Clement's channel.